Hi, my name is Ed Moya. I'm the Chief Currency Strategist and Head Forex Educator at Trading Advantage, and I would like to thank you for watching. I truly believe that FX provides the retail trader a great opportunity, and I'm going to share with you a proprietary money management strategy and the risk calculator, which is a strategy I employ in my own trading and have successfully taught to many of my students. If you've been around the Forex world, you know there are all sorts of types of layers in this game. I'm not a new scalper, a glorified hindsight analyst. I'm also not a robot, nor do I have a magic indicator. I have many years experience in the industry and have worked at some of the largest international Forex firms. I was a broker, an analyst, and also a trading specialist. At GFT and Alpari, I helped train thousands of traders on both fundamental and technical analysis. At FX Solutions, I was a VP of Institutional Sales and a Market Strategist and authored numerous trading strategies, covered market reactions to statistical releases, and interpreted on a daily basis what were the key drivers and trends in the FX market. I'm also a contributor to the financial news networks, and I'm often asked to share my Forex expertise and market commentary. Here's a clip of me from February 2013 on Bloomberg News. First over to, uh, to Ed Moya uh, here on the charts. Walk us through what's going on in the euro right now. It's really just taken off. And the question is, from a technical perspective, can it be sustained? Yes, good afternoon. And uh, you can see right now from the charts, this is a weekly chart. We've had quite the strong bullish trend over the last several months. Um, since we had the uh, July 26th moment with Mario Draghi trying to save the euro, doing whatever it takes, we've seen a rather strong uptrend. And yesterday we had a significant price event where we had price break down below, not just the 13500 level, which is a key psychological trading zone. We also saw a break down below the 200-day weekly simple moving average. So price has continued its bearish pullback and uh, we could start to see this um, strong bullish move threatened. However, we do ultimately maintain a relatively firm bullish stance on the euro. We could start to see price tend to um, find some support around the 13100 level. And that's actually the 38% retracement of this most recent low to high move. Yeah, Alan Nuckman. In this video, I will give you a technical strategy that you can immediately apply to your trading. But first, I need to show you this disclosure. So let's get started learning a technical strategy that you can apply immediately to your forex trading. It involves harmonics, and no, that's not listening to music to stimulate a meditative state while you trade. I will tell you about harmonic patterns and the specific ABCD pattern and its use for the bullish and bearish setups. I will teach you how to draw the ABCD pattern and help you incorporate it in our trading and how to spot strong risk reward ratios. I believe FX is the best opportunity to take advantage of and monetize world events. Here's a picture of me seeing the action firsthand in August of 2011 when I attended the Spanish protests in Puerto del Sol and interviewed some of the heads of organizations that were trying to make their case to leave the euro and arrest government officials for allegedly stealing the people's money. But attending a protest didn't give me the tools to trade Forex, but my years of experience in the markets do. I have seen hundreds of strategies tested and during various market conditions. Whether it was September 2008, when the $700 billion bailout did not pass, and the Dow dropped 700 points and the dollar dropped 300 pips to the yen in one hour, or during the flash crash, or restructuring of Greek debt, or Ireland's bailout. By observing these market conditions, I've developed specific risk management disciplines that can be successfully applied in various market conditions. But before I give you these strategies, I want first to talk to you about how I believe Forex can help you grow your portfolio and build wealth like no other asset class. Despite what you may have been led to believe, the stock market and traditional model of buy and hold investing may be anything but a way to build wealth. Yes, the mainstream press continually positions buy and hold investing as a good or safe and anything else as bad or risky. But let's remember 2008. Mutual fund companies, brokers, financial planners, and even the financial press always put forth a barrage of statistics showing buy and hold as a wise and profitable strategy. However, in my opinion, statistics can be selectively chosen to prove or disprove anything. In the past four years, several stock market indices have recovered most of their 40 to 50 percent losses from the 2007-2008 financial collapse on the backdrop that central banks would continue to stimulate their economy. But what if the Federal Reserve ends their policies of unlimited easing, which is pumping liquidity into the markets and interest rates rise? You cannot afford a buy and hold strategy without careful investment selection and diligent monitoring. No investment is good forever, and that especially applies to the currencies. I believe that some type of active management of your portfolio will yield much better results. 
It is odd, but many investors seem to want an easy way out, a free lunch when it comes to their investing. Buy and hold has such an appeal because it appears to be easy. The idea behind buy and hold is that you will buy something and hold it over the long term for a good profit. But no one bothers to ever ask what I consider to be the critical questions. Buy what? Hold what? And for how long? And don't forget that in FX we trade in pairs and we can also pair strength with weakness. This will become more apparent in the live trading room where we dissect all the major fundamental drivers. Another key question is, how does one define long term? Obviously, you have to choose something to buy and hold. What if you chose the wrong stock or mutual fund? The idea that you simply can buy something and forget it is foolish. As far as I'm concerned, a buy and hold strategy is akin to sticking your head in the sand. Again, I believe you'll fare much better if you actively manage your investments with an interconnected global economy and ever-changing macroeconomic realities you need strategies that can work in all types of market conditions while there are strategies to trade equities for bear market conditions I believe there is a much better way most traders first start currency trading by trying to find the directional bias of the market and overlook the fact that the spot market is a margin based account you might recall signing off on a few disclaimers when you first open that trading account First, FX is different than other markets because you can trade with a lot more leverage. You'll often hear people say it's a high risk, high reward market, and that is very much true. Let's compare it to stocks. If you open a specific margin account with many stockbrokers and deposit $10,000, you can usually get 2 to 1 leverage. US FX traders may use 50 to 1 leverage, while Europe and Asian traders may opt for leverage as high as 400 to 1. Diversifying your portfolio is important, and it's easy to get started in FX as you can open an account with as little as $1,000. Let's look at how you can use FX in the context of the broader macroeconomic fundamentals. In the summer of 2012, some technicians may have thought the euro was hitting a bottom. If you followed the geopolitical comments from the new ECB president, you may have been a little bit more confident in taking action. Eventually, Mario Draghi announced new tools to help alleviate the European debt crisis. Another key macro development was Australia's currency boom, and record strength appeared to be dramatically stalling as China was showing signs of weakness. Euro Aussie made a historic low and had a technical breakout higher, and this rebound was confirmed fundamentally. But you must remember leverage is a double edged sword, it can work for you and against you. As the FDR quote says, that great power involves great responsibility. That is why in my trading strategies, I don't stress over leveraging your account, but using techniques that can keep you in the game over the long haul instead of using leverage to swing for the fences. I believe trading Forex provides the highest reward potential, but at the greatest risk. After years of training and monitoring clients, I have seen disciplined traders lose focus once and give up all their gains. The following 10 commandments of Forex risk management are what I believe the key to staying in the game for the long haul. Commandment number one. It is imperative that before you start entering a trade, you must always know where your stop loss will be placed. It is unacceptable to enter it one minute later or one hour. By waiting, you will leave a motion in the picture, and that might make you take a wider stop loss. The second commandment is, when traders first try to tackle the fundamentals, they seldom truly understand how market positioning can be just as important. If you have a shocking statistical release or a surprise rate decision, and the market refuses to breach a key level, chances are sovereign demand or big money is protecting that key level. Commandment number three. Doubling down on a losing trade is the quickest way to killing your account. I've seen even great traders have losing streaks of seven in a row, and what makes them so successful is that they stay disciplined and exercise aggressive risk reward ratios. The fourth commandment is give your winning trades time to continue winning. Do not become emotional and close that market because you see a doji candle. FX is the strongest trending market, and it's vital to give your trade every opportunity to reach its profit objective. 
The fifth commandment is, never get upset over a winning trade. As I mentioned earlier, trading should be emotionless. Your next trade should not be influenced by the outcome of your previous trade. If you lost 45 pips in the previous trade, your profit target should not be based off of that level. It should be determined based off of trade flows and technical analysis. Commandment number six. If the criteria for a trade are not fulfilled, do not force a trade for any reason. We've all been there. It's about time to leave for work or perhaps you're about to go to bed. You've been spending several hours in front of your computer and you want to make a trade. You must resist and do not force any trades, no matter how much time you spent analyzing the market. The seventh commandment is that you should always keep a trader's journal. This might take away time away from trading and learning, but it is critical to your growth. This should especially be a top priority for any new trader. The eighth commandment is, if bad trading conditions persist, you should consider trading smaller. At least wait until you have consecutive winning trades before resuming trading your original trade size. Everyone has losing streaks. It's important to stay disciplined and be able to reassess your strategy or better understand the current trading environment. Commandment number nine. Once everything is clicking, you may consider trading larger if you're winning and the market conditions remain liquid. Some traders may increase their trade size by 25 or 50 percent. And please remember, Exercise caution during summer trading, post-Christmas week, and during natural disasters in times of war. The tenth and final commandment, never say never. There will come a couple occasions where we may need to break a rule. This, however, should not become a habit. A couple of examples of some acceptable situations where we may break a rule is, for instance, if let's say Greece decided to leave the euro and we already short the euro, we may consider adding to our short position. Or if let's say we were currently long the Canadian dollar and all of a sudden the U.S. announced that they were going to use the strategic petroleum reserves, we may find it acceptable to reverse our position. The goal of these rules is to help you limit your losses when you're wrong, and these rules should mainly be kept intact. Knowing how much you're risking is very important. For the students in my trading room who follow my signals, I teach them that their trading account balance should provide them with enough room to add additional positions, suffer drawdown, and survive any surprising gaps. You especially don't want to be overly margined. If you have a $1,000 trading account and you want to risk 3% on every trade, if you identified a 30 pip stop loss, your trade size should be 10,000 units, or one mini lot. However, if your stop loss is going to be 60 pips, in this example, your trade size should be 5,000 units, which is 5 micro lots. The risk calculator is a tool that will help you identify how much volatility is in the market and filter whether or not the conditions are ideal for trading. We will use the average true range on a daily chart and analyze where the current range is respective to the high and low for the last year. In most instances, you will see trending and range bound opportunities. In recent years, the commodity currencies have provided some of the strongest trending opportunities. At times, we will see enhanced volatility against the European and safe haven currencies. The risk calculator will help dictate which directional bias you may have on the shorter time periods. Range-bound opportunities often involve currencies that might be interdependent upon one another. For example, the US dollar with the Canadian currency. Another example is the Australian dollar with the Kiwi, and that's because they're both interdependent on China. If the markets are crazily moving, we will oftentimes stay on the sidelines. When you're more experienced, you may trade these times only when the market volatility is somewhat contained. This proprietary risk calculator can be applied to a variety of trades, but it works well with my technical strategies and fundamental setups. I will cover these in the next part of the series, so please come back for part two. Risk management is just one part of the equation, and in the next video, I will give you a technical strategy that you can immediately apply to your Forex trading. See you guys in the next video.